Hi beautiful souls and welcome to my channel. Long time no see, I have not filmed a reading with my face for a long long time, but I guess it's finally time to do that. It's Scorpio season, it's my season, I have the right to do it. <laughs> and um, we're going to do a pick a card, a very minimalistic one, uh, because I'll be just using this tarot deck, just one tarot deck, and we're going to be doing a mix of love messages, anything else that wants to come through for the month of October and a couple of months ahead. Um, because it's Scorpio season, I really want to read into what are we becoming magnets to? What are we magnetizing into our lives? Uh, what is our energy attracting at this time? And especially in love, especially when it comes to you beauty and manifestation, Venus energy, okay, when Venus goes into Scorpio, um, it's gonna be really fun. She's still not there. I think she's still in Libra or Virgo, I'm not sure, have to check, um, but I'll be channeling some astrology placements for you guys, for the different piles and messages based on that and whatever else comes through. Um, I just want to kind of go in the zone and zone out into the cosmos basically that's why i'm keeping just one deck with me i want to focus more on channeling for this reading and yeah and it felt more personal kind of like the readings i do for my friends at little coffee shops that's why i chose to film myself instead of the cards and because we'll be very minimalistic anyway so you're gonna be choosing from three piles, pile number one, two, or three. And you can either pick the number, pick the numbers on the timestamps, however you resonate with one of the groups. Um, so the timestamps will be in the description box below and in the comment section as well. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous, just a little bit. So pile one, let's see what is coming through for you. I do see a figurine, so I don't know if you're working with deities and if you're using little figurines, but I was seeing a figurine in the distance. Some of you are detached from your tempo or from your altar altered. Some of you are far away from your altar or from your spiritual toolkit and you're manifesting uh, by improvising, by using little things that you find. Maybe you're in a new city, maybe you're visiting and you're staying at somebody else's home and you couldn't carry all of your things with you and we have eclipses going on. So maybe your manifestation and your spiritual work right now is kind of improvised. Um, but there is a disc above that figurine. It looks like a little figurine of either Hathor or Isis, kind of standing and holding something. And there is a disc coming down, like this orb coming down. And it was pale blue color with a bit of gray in it. You've been praying for this one um, idea that has to do with you speaking to manifest. And I feel like you don't see it coming yet, but it's happening. Okay. Um, your prayer about this thing has been heard. By the way, you have um, the Eight of Cups, Saturn and Pisces. So let me show you. Very interesting because Saturn in Pisces is about being serious about your spirituality, um, being very diligent, mastering the spiritual craft. And with the Eight of Cups, walking away from something that's no longer walking, uh, working from, uh, for you, there's this combination of you, your access to certain spiritual tools. And even the energy and the desire to do certain spiritual practices is limited. And it's been limited for a purpose. The universe has been taking you away, far away from 
spiritual practices that no longer serve you or you're no longer meant to engage with. Even spiritual teachers, um, meditation practices. There is something about your access to certain astral fields or parts of the astral plane being limited to you for a reason. You're not being restricted. You're not being... Mm, not psychic enough or anything like this. There is a reason why you're no longer allowed to go in certain places. It's like, okay, you elevated enough so that you no longer need these experiences. You learned what you had to learn from them. There's no further need to engage with the energy. And for some of you, this will be a karmic contract with a soulmate. You no longer need to engage with this, with the energy of this individual. You learned what you had to learn. Saturn, the world card, is a closure to this spiritual journey. Pisces is the final sign. So there is a closure and a mastery achieved out of a relationship. And um, there's no need to dig further into it. So for you guys, definitely most of you are moving into new partnerships. You're moving into new connections. There's no need to dwell on the past. The Page of Wands. Cancer, Leo, Virgo. This is the Page of Wands or the Princess of Wands. She is Feminine, a fire energy. So what what is your energy magnetizing into your life? Some luxury items, some new spiritual items like a new crystal wand, a new tarot deck. It's really good to get your hands on something new. I really feel like maybe your altar... Um, and the things that you put on your altar have been outdated. Pay attention, some of you might have put like, I don't know, food or flowers and you keep them for a, for a way too long. Um, your ancestors or whatever spirits you put these things for are basically like, yeah, I mean, it expired. <laughs> it's outdated. It no longer gives us energy. So you have to take care of the altar, keeping it fresh. You have to take care of your spiritual toolkit, keeping it cleansed, keeping it also fresh. Um, there's something about working with cinnamon and spices. Um, cinnamon, ginger, anything like spicy, actually spicy. Um, working with it for spells and magic is going to be really beneficial and there's something about a manifesting beauty. The Page of Wands is definitely attractiveness, beauty, allure, flirt, being being flirtatious, being playful, childlike, and enigmatic. Um, and I think you're going to do this through some little herbal ritual. Um, I think you're going to do this... Specifically, I'm seeing like a... Like an actual wand an actual wooden stick you know <laughs> and i wonder if these are uh, cinnamon sticks like not cinnamon um grinded cinnamon but the sticks work with those but right now you do appear very attractive to your exes you do appear very attractive to people and things and places that you've walked away from. You may receive a call, an invitation from somebody from the past being like, Hey, you're looking good. Do you want to come by? Do you want to come to my birthday party? Some of you will be invited to parties. Some of you will be invited to social gatherings just because you kind of, you kind of elevate the aesthetic of the place by being there. So your presence will be sought out because your energy is very fresh. Your energy is very just playful, playful and that attracts people.
maybe the transits of Venus going through Leo, retrograding, then going back direct. This really changed your beauty, your aesthetic. This was really a glow up time for some of you. You have the Hierophant, you have Venus in Aries with the Four of Wands, and you have... Hold on. Knight of Swords, um, Air Element, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, Gemini, and Taurus. Okay, we have Taurus twice, and we have a bit of Aries, right. And these are the cards, by the way. <laughs> there you go. Hmm. What is this? So look here. These snakes or worms or whatever in her magic bubble and this man pulling here, holding a wand right here. You're attracting a partner that is just as competitive as you are, that is just as magically educated as you are. Somebody, and even if it's not like spiritual, um, spirituality oriented, this person is as good as you are at the things that you're good at. And there is a sense of competition, there is a sense of let me show you the way to do that, and you're like, no, let me show you the way to do that. And um, there's a bit of love-hate relationship push-pull going on in your um, romantic dynamics, in your love life. Hmm. But you're meeting somebody who is either a teacher or who is just very educated. Even if they're not a teacher, they're like smarter than their teachers or something. Because you have the Knight of Swords. This is somebody who goes and gathers information. This is somebody who goes on social quests. They meet people. They talk to all sorts of people. They are not afraid to speak. They speak their mind. They are quite sharp-tongued and a bit traditional, which is interesting. Um, they are traditional enough to ground themselves to have a foundation, they have um, strong values that don't really budge. Even for the people that they're in love with, their values will not budge. And they may be open-minded and respect you with the Knight of Swords, they may be curious about you, interested in what you have to say, but with the Hierophant, their values will not really budge. And I think that this is gonna be first a very mental connection um, there will be, of course, the physical attraction, but I think that you will spend a long time talking to each other. There is a lot of communication. There is a funny introduction by an elder figure that is possible. Um, it's possible that you meet through an older friend, somebody who's already in a committed relationship and somebody who's already very well established. But yeah, you are attracting this person indeed. And um, it's a love-hate relationship, to be honest with you. Now, some of you, you see that figurine right here? Isis. And they're summoning the birth of Horus. Or summoning doesn't sound really good, but... <laughs> And that's what's basically happening in the card. So Horus is that new era of your life. And it's also a baby. So some of you have been asking for a partner that is willing to take care of children. That is willing to have children. And maybe that's exactly what you're getting. Somebody who, once again, carries more of a traditional idea about relationships. Uh, but they're smart enough to be flexible and interesting despite being traditional because I think when we say traditional we associate the word with something boring something too stable too boring too outdated and old but actually this person is smart enough to keep it fun keep it interesting keep it intellectually challenging flexible flowing right but then when it comes to stepping up for, to the challenge, to the, rising up to the occasion, they enter this traditional sense of their role in the relationship. Hmm. 
before you meet this person, because you have the Four of Wands, Page of Wands, and the Knight of Swords, these three cards together, they talk about a lot of trial and error. So some of you are entering a period where you dare to date. You dare to experiment, get experience. Um, you're daring to go out there in the dating scene and just go for, for it, go for the relationship. There is definitely temptation. For those of you who are in committed relationships, I do sense temptation. You have these snakes in the Four of Wands and it looks like temptation entering the heart of the home and entering the house. Creating conflict. Some of you, you have very powerful intuition when it comes to protecting yourself and your home. And if you share your home with somebody and they brought in weird energy because they gave into temptation, your, your energy field is not going to take that very lightly. So if you have conflicts with somebody you live with, maybe a romantic partner, maybe a best friend, maybe just a roommate that you trust usually. Mm. Your strong protective magic or just your aura will not, it will cause unexpected, unknown conflicts. Like you don't know why you're fighting with this person. You don't know why they're so reactive, why you're so reactive, but you're subconsciously reacting to them giving into temptation and bringing in the home nasty energy or just not so good energy like snake energy <laughs> how can i define this as good energy right so i think this is a clear sign it's your intuition telling you and you may not usually fight with this person you may not usually feel like this about this person so any weird feeling about somebody that you live with or somebody you're in a relationship with it's telling you there's been a leakage, a leak in your combined field or, or that there is something going on around them that is trying to get to them and you can feel that and it's almost like your subconscious mind is reacting as if this person is a child and they cannot sense the threat. And you're like, how can you not sense the threat? And that's why you're getting angry at them. And that's why you're having conflicts. Pay attention to your person's finances. Pay attention to their health. Pay attention to their routine. They might be, with this 80s energy, they might be very driven people. They may be always on the go. If they've been lazy and just sitting around or they've been not their usual self and you feel... Like you want to fight with them all of a sudden for some reason, almost all the time, something is off and it's somebody in their environment and you should pay attention to their friends and who they've been spending time with lately. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm getting... Um... I guess a specific message for someone out there with the Hierophant and the Knight of Swords. Some of you have a father figure on the other side who used to cheat on your mom and they deeply regret it. So they don't want this to happen to you. So they will expose people that even think about this happening and they will create these conflicts or they will sp spike up, um, light up 
a lamp in your mind, in your intuition, that something is off. Okay, for some of you, it's your fathers protecting you, trying to redeem themselves for doing the same thing. So your mothers. Especially a Capricorn father and a Taurus father figure is what I'm getting here. For some reason, with the Capricorn father, there is a cat spirit appearing as well. A cat spirit, and I feel like something else is also trying to come through, but it's not clear, so I'm not gonna really take it. I do need a clear message to take it. So, file one. Is there anything else that you should know? Anything else that you should know about your love life? About the current energies? Any messages from spirit? I'm seeing um, a signal, a song being beamed down onto you, kind of like the energy of that song is trying to create a synchronicity so that you notice it because it's a message from somebody. And you don't listen to this type of music is what I'm hearing. I'm hearing they don't listen to this type of music, Pylon. You don't. But this song will mean something to you. Anything else? The Empress. Yeah, so for those of you who've been wanting to become mothers or you've been wanting to find a mother to your children, I do see this manifesting in the upcoming months. Of course, maybe the pregnancy will not happen, but you will find a partner if you're looking for the partner or if, if you've been trying to get pregnant or, you know, get your partner pregnant, then this is happening in the next months. For those of you who are single, you're finding the right person for this. <clears throat> for some reason, I'm noticing the clouds behind her. Okay, this is the Empress. And the Empress is such a positive card, but me looking at this, I'm hearing mourning the past and mourning the seeds that did not grow, whatever this means for you. There is a new era for you guys, like by one, there is a new era of growth. I think you've been long enough in an era of sitting in the same place or not really seeing progression, but you are, you're going to see it. Especially 2024 Aquarius season feels very significant. For some of you, there is um, an event that is almost initiatory, Aquarius season 2024, which is end of, uh, end of January, beginning of February. Okay, so I think that's it all for pile one. We're going to cleanse the deck by knocking on it and shuffling it and move on to pile, pile two. Okay, pile two. Let's get your messages out. What is coming up for you in love? Okay. 
<laughs> there is something you've been putting on your head and maybe even on your forehead and for some of you it could be makeup for others it could be a bandana a scarf a hat why are you covering your head by you there is something about covering your head almost hiding your eyes in your face but mostly covering your head There is this need to, because hmm. we're asking about love, right? Relationships, what are we magnetic to? What are we attracting? And I keep seeing this, like covering your eyes, covering the, the center of your forehead, as if you're hiding the door to your soul, which the eyes are. Why? Mercury, duality, dual conversations, dual projections. You are very, like, pile two, you might be very public, very exposed. And there is a lot of dual reactions to you. A lot of dualistic streams of thoughts uh, toward you. What about love, spirit? How is this related? Mars and Leo, Seven of Wands. Some of you, metaphorically, are in the dark forest facing the Monsters and the creatures, you don't even know what they look like. You fight based on instinct, you protect yourself based on instinct. You navigate a treacherous field based on instincts only, it's like you're blind. And um, you're, you're hiding your eyes, your third eye, your head, so that it doesn't get harmed. Because you don't see any ways in this field. And being blind or... You know, hiding your eyes, it's not like, it's not going to actually take away your sight because it's dark anyway and you don't see anything anyway. So you would rather protect your vision. You don't see any way. Don't see any way. The thing is, right now, you're not sure where exactly the universe wants you. You don't see any way. You're in the dark about something. And you're facing the monsters by instinct. You're tackling challenges instinctually without a purpose. You're taking care of issues based on what you consider is the best to do. So you're trying to risk as little as possible during this time of not knowing where you're going. In love, many of you attract a warrior. A warrior type of person, a warrior type of spirit. Eight of Cups again, Saturn in Pisces, and Ace of Pentacles, right? Yes, this is the Ace of Pentacles. You are protecting a treasure, a fortune. You feel like the universe told you, you have this mission, you have this quest, you have to do it. And you went into the quest, doing it. But at some point, the universe stopped talking to you and it left you deal with this on your own. 
it lets you find the treasure on your own. There is a lot of angelic energy that I sense around your money, around your abundance, around the award that you're supposed to receive or the, the blessings that you've earned, that you've worked hard for. Now, receiving an award for your purpose sounds very egoistic. So it's rather the energy exchange, right? You gave in a lot, you gave a lot of energy into something, you put a lot of energy into something you rightfully deserve. <laughs> this energy back for balance and there is a lot of angelic protection but for you it's kind of like the treasure box is at the bottom of a lake of a very dirty lake still watered is coming through you're swimming through still water and you don't know what's lurking in in there in relationships relationships Listen, I, I, I feel like there is a lot of burning passion to prove yourself, to prove your value to a partner, to a potential partner. Mars and Leo. It's very ambitious energy. I feel like right now you're approaching love, you're tackling relationships from a very ambitious place. High standards, high expectations. Um, you expect a lot of you and the person you're gonna be with. I do feel like some of you are waiting on somebody who is with a karmic partner, okay? Mm. I don't want to create drama. I don't like to talk about, oh, this other person that your person is with, they're their karmic partner because you're better than them because that's not the case. We're all different, period. But what I feel is that your own person is trying to be a warrior and fight without the need to, like they're creating drama in their life. Mars and Leo, you create drama to solve the drama to feel like you did something. And that's what your person is doing by being with somebody they shouldn't be with. And that's what you're doing by waiting on them to change their mind. And this is keeping you away from your abundance. You waiting on a relationship with somebody who is involved with somebody else, whether it's healthy or not, whether it's the best decision or not, doesn't matter. They're involved with somebody else and you waiting on them slows you down from you getting out of the dark forest, getting out of the way, uh, getting out of the lake, excuse me. Um, finding, finding your treasure, finding your abundance at the end of the journey. I'm getting Archangel Sandal phone coming through, trying to bring you back in a state of receptivity, reciprocity, trying to bring you back into your feminine energy. Um, you've been very proactive, very dominating. Queen of 
Queen of Pentacles. Receptive energy. It's time to receive that Ace of Pentacles. It's time to receive that abundance and it's time to receive a blessing from the angels. Um, there is definitely a contract with a very, very pure soul. Angel Sandalfon. Mm. <sighs> there is something that's on the tip of my tongue and I hate it when this happens. I'm getting number six and number nine, but separate, okay? Separate piles. You don't think anything can holy. Not on my watch. What am I talking about? I'm a Scorpio. Anyways, the sixth of a month or the ninth of a month or the sixth of September or ninth of June. This is the birthday of something who is very angelic, very pure and very good for you. And they're coming into your life and they are a blessing by the angels you are gifted a relationship but it will take you to give up this other person you've been waiting on for too long in order to receive this relationship to sustain it to develop it etc and with this person you're going to actually grow your abundance a lot There is like a yellow door or a golden gate as I would like to call it. But for some of you, this might be a fun coincidence where in real life, actually, maybe a door in your apartment, a door to your bank, to a school where you want to study or something, where you're going to meet this person. There is like a yellow door, like actually yellow. And it's going to be a very fun coincidence. And you're going to see it. You're going to be like, she just said that in her reading. I know this for sure. I see it so clearly. And there is a a strange handle. I don't know how to describe it. Because I'm seeing uh, those handles that are like um, a, a sphere, right? And you turn it to open. It's either this or it's something a bit vintage-y. The handle looks vintage somehow, some way. It looks almost like a... A, a magical handle like the door will take you to another dimension and it turns out to be an office or I don't know a, a yoga studio or something something like that but this is gonna be your sign from the universe your soulmate is coming you're on the right track your abundance is coming you gotta seek your abundance here Knight of Swords again. I do see talking to custom service, um, customer service, but in an office, like face to face. You're buying the supplies that you need for creating a product that's going to make you a lot of money. And you're negotiating the terms with somebody very soon. It's like dropping that person you've been waiting on will not only bring your soulmate, but it will activate your abundance. It will bring you back in a state of abundance and it will link you back to the stream of universal supply. For some reason, I see your person wearing a badge at work that says their name. Um, they need a badge to open doors, get in certain on certain floors. Okay, wow, Mars and Aries, two of wands. I feel like your soulmate and you are starting your business at the same time, and you're coming into alignment because of this. 
maybe you're doing something similar or they're gonna turn out to be somebody who helps you with your business with your product they're gonna be like a manager or somebody that you talk to you once again customer service one some someone like this two of wands there's a lot of planning a lot of strategizing I'm hearing unstoppable energy. I'm getting there are certain events that you've been trying to postpone but they are unavoidable between you and your person. You and your soulmate. I'm telling you, your soulmate is a soldier. Soldier. They're very strong, maybe not just metaphorically, but also physically. They are very, very strong. They could be an athlete that um, decided to create a brand, that decided to become an entrepreneur, a personal trainer. And I do see them ending up protecting you, defending you for some reason. So I'm telling you, they're somehow involved in the field where you want to venture out and do stuff. But you need guidance, you need connections, you need someone to stand behind you, protect you. And they're going to be that individual. I also see that if some of you need to like take a loan for your business, but you have to prove to the bank how you how are you going to pay off the loan how are you going to pay off the debt you're going to marry and that individual will be kind of like the proof they're going to be like okay you know i sign up that if you pile two don't pay off the loan i will something like that they will back you up financially without actually giving you money it will be just on paper you just need like the legal the legal things to be done and okay Anything else for pile two? Some of you guys, some of you... I'm getting... There is an irony. There is an irony because some of you never wanted to get married. And the moment you meet your soulmate, you are like... You know you're going to be committed to life, uh, for life to this person. They're giving me not just Mars qualities, right, 80s, but they're also giving me Jupiter, Sagittarius, Zeus vibes. So, they have earned a name for themselves or a social rank through... A lot of physical labor and a lot of hard work. Your person. They're a very pure hardworking individual. <laughs> like, they're not lazy at all. And they are intimidating, but actually they're very, very pure. On the inside. <laughs> Wow. Okay, hold on a second. We have the Emperor, Queen of Wands, the Temperance card, and Nine of Swords. For some of you, you're meeting your soulmate after they divorced or you divorced. 
right after that and you were like you promised yourself i'm never going to remarry i'm never going to do this again and you meet your person and you do it it's like the universe telling you just because you made the wrong decision once i mean just because you chose the wrong person doesn't mean that somebody else is not worth it to trust and to commit to forever for the rest of your life I also have to say something Be careful. In my readings, every single time, there is a sentence, most likely starting with, be careful. <laughs> be careful with cheating. Some of you will be in a relationship before meeting that soulmate, right? And the reason why your divorce might be cheating Or you may cheat with your soulmate on the individual you currently are with and basically start on the wrong note with your soulmate. And I just want to warn you, okay, that in the next months till the rest of the year, you may find out something like that, okay? Cheating is just coming through. With, with the Emperor, Queen of Wands, somebody feels way too good and way too perfect, so why can't they enjoy whatever temptation is in front of them? And then, oh, for some reason, this Temperance card doesn't give me vibes of balance. It gives me vibes of alchemy. You know, two people coming together, but there is almost fire because of them coming together and look at this we have mars and jupiter ah oh, it doesn't show them well the sigils for mars and jupiter are here and that's agitarian mars qualities of your person that i was channeling your person may have simply i don't know like a lot of exes um you will have a lot of reasons to be either jealous or just very protective of your individual because your soulmate, the one that's coming through next, is very de very desired, very sought out. And yeah, this can make you a bit uncomfortable. So you will have to trust that you are their divine, perfect counterpart, perfect match. You're coming together with somebody who... It's very powerful and it may make you feel like you're not worth to be with them or something like this, but that is not true at all. It's just that you have to wear your confidence as a crown on your head and show very clearly to them that you know your worth. They might be amazing, outstanding individuals, but you have to show them that you know your worth because your person is a boss. Your soulmate is somebody who has a lot of control, a lot of power, a lot of say in how their life happens, in how their life moves. And um, they're used to being respected and being seen as the prize. But in this relationship, you have to wear your crown and show them that you are the prize in your story. So they have to earn you, they have to work for you. I'm telling you, they're a very good person, they're a pure soul, but they have way too much power and way too much influence and way too much confidence, all right? So it's like, you won't believe that this relationship is happening, it's gonna be so good, but, it, but you have to pretend like you totally buy it because it totally happens to you every day. I mean, you have to make it seem uh, to this person 
that they're not very special to you. I mean, you cherish them, you appreciate them, but they're not the only one who is worth your time because they value time. They value what they put their energy into. And if you are effortless for them, they may not value as much as they should. And I think that this is the only, only uh, challenge with the soulmate. But the rest looks really good. You really look like a match made in heaven with the temperance card. Um, and the cheating part is involved with this individual you're waiting on. Okay. Maybe you're trying to reconcile with an ex, you know, figure out when you were together, they cheated on you or something like this. And this is the breaking point and the moment when you decide that, okay, we're not reconciling, I'm, I'm leaving you behind. So pile two, this is what's coming up for your love life. I hope it resonated. Let me know in the comment section below and let's move on to pile three. Pile three. What messages are coming through for you? Pile three, spirit, pile three. I'm seeing arrows and I, this is not Sagittarius though it's not like the the arrow right of Sagittarius it's about directions a road trip directions navigation is coming through your love life your love life sorry <laughs> your love <laughs> your love life will be changed very dramatically after a trip with someone, with a group of people, wherever you're going, whoever you're going with, it's going to change a lot for you. A lot of your perspective on love and who you love and who you want to be with for the rest of your life or who you want to be in a relationship with in general. What type of people? Before I saw the arrows, I had a vision of a very gentle, soft woman, almost like the woman on the star card in tarot. Someone almost like ethereal. And then I saw, boom, like spontaneous, dramatic, sh uh, shifted energy, arrows traveling, um, road signs, road trips. You want to choose between the ethereal, ideal, the dreamy partner or the adventurer that you can have fun with. You're making decisions, pile three, in your love life. What do you want? What do you want to commit to before it's too late, before you break hearts? Pile three, you're my heartbreakers. I know. Especially if you have like air or fire Venuses, you have to take your sweet time to figure out what you want in a relationship because you may jump into something and then realize that you're totally bored out of your mind. It sounded good on paper, but living the relationship was not so fun. Pallas Athena is coming to you with her owl. She, she is trying to guide you through wisdom. Um, look at this. Page of Cups. Look how soft and gentle. You have a poet, a witch, 
an artist in love with you bio three you have somebody very emotional very psychologically savvy and very deep and very artistic once again ethereal dreamy in love with you and they're offering to you the ways of their ancestors they're offering to you the ways of how their ancestors formed families and communities they're inviting you into their family into their home into their heart especially in december maybe they want to celebrate christmas with you or something you definitely have somebody who's crushing on you writing poems about you painting about you or you um writing music they're praying for you you've got somebody praying for you pile three and that is rare and that is maybe the most special because if somebody uses their spiritual contact to ask for your good and for your well-being this person really loves you they pray for you and some of you are afraid that you're gonna be the ones breaking their heart i don't know why though some of your Aries or liberalizing, interesting, the oppositions are coming through. Either Aries or liberalizing. Mars and Gemini, uh, Gemini Nine of Swords. They have nightmares about you or they have a lot of dreams about you, but they're scared. They're scared to share with you their psychic experiences with you. Not discard again. The Queen of Cups. Look at her. She is so beautiful. She's gorgeous. Wait. Queen of Cups. This person's mother either loves you or they really want to meet you. There's something about this person introducing you to their siblings and then their mother and slowly building up your connection to their family. They love you deeply. It's not just a crush. Now that I think about it, I'm not channeling just a crush. But they're slow to open up and to, and to trust. They really want to trust you fully. But they're intuitive. They can sense your own, you know, unsureness. Uncertainty. They've cleansed you. Pile 3, you've got somebody who healed you. They cleansed you. They pray for your energy. They clean your aura. They meditate connecting with you to cleanse you to protect you it's like someone is trying to send good magic in your space and i'm usually against any even like even the good stuff like casting a good spell for somebody to help them i'm against that a bit uh maybe praying for them that's good but like the magic and the stuff but they include you in their spiritual practices they include your name in their prayer in their manifestation journals They see you as somebody that they've been with in past lives. They recognize you. They understand you on a very deep level. Even you don't understand how well they know you. I'm getting a name starting with the letter V. That this person is having this name. Prince of Spheres or the, the Knight of Pentacles. Taurus energy, Taurus, Aries, Venus, Mars, uh, sorry, Mercury, Moon, okay. Mm. 
Moon and Mercury in Taurus, Venus in Aries. Okay. You're accepted. You're accepted by the family. You're accepted by the ancestors. You are an energetic match to this individual. I don't know why you have doubts, but I feel like this person would be the happiest person to be with you. <laughs> and their spiritual team embraces you. You're very embraced by this person and their people. This is somebody that wants to build a home with you. Okay, Knight of Swords. This is somebody that wants to travel, get educated with you. They want to follow you. Wherever you go, they want to be with you. They are ready to sacrifice for you. If you don't know anyone, if you cannot think of anyone right now, you have two people, an earth and air sign, and both of them are offering you very different journeys. One is offering more of a traditional thing, more of a stable, secure, committed relationship. The other is offering this adventure piety, the adventure of going to different countries, studying there, meeting new people, networking. They're offering you more of a, like something that will benefit you more than the relationship itself. The first, the earth sign individual, they are offering like this stable committed relationship that will benefit both of you or that will benefit the relationship itself. While the air sign is offering a journey that will help you improve your own life outside of the relationship. Oops. I think you're leaning more toward the air sign, um, but we'll see. Mars and Scorpio. <laughs> wow. Five of Cups. You want the forbidden love. You crave that bio tree. It's like, it's difficult for you to enjoy a good thing because you're looking for the forbidden fruit, the forbidden love, the adventurous, unpredictable love story. Just be careful because with the Five of Cups, you may not recognize properly who is actually better for you long-term, health-wise, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically. And you may end up losing both because you wait for too long. You juggle both opportunities for too long. So you have to make a decision in love. Don't waste your time. And don't waste these people's time because you're going to end up losing both of them. I hate it when this happens. <laughs> okay, I rose from the dead, <laughs> officially. So, Moon in Aquarius, Jupiter in Libra, and the Knight or the King of Pentacles. Seven of Swords with the Moon in Aquarius, Four of Swords with Jupiter in Libra. Hmm, interesting. There is a dece deceptive contract, deceitful or deceptive contract. And then the King of Pentacles. Somebody appears who waits you perfect to be true. And they want to deceive you with the contract or maybe they don't want to do it consciously, but the way they present to you the opportunity that they are offering is not what it's actually going to be like. 
And because we have swords, I'm talking about maybe the air sign who's offering like an adventure, studying together, moving to a new country together, making money, doing business, whatever, whatever. Um, but that contract is not as good as, as they promise it to be. And essentially being in a relationship with them is going to make you feel quite lonely at the end of the day. And it's going to teach you how to surrender to the divine plan, which means that they're not, they're probably not the right decision for you. And then you have the king of pentacles. The knight of pentacles becomes a king. The knight of swords remains a knight. So, I don't know what you want out of love, Pio 3, but you have someone who may appear more routine-oriented, like they enjoy a simple lifestyle and just a regular, committed, repetitive relationship. They like it. They like the stability of it. They like being comfortable. They like just enjoying spending time with you, doing, watching movies, doing quote-unquote boring things, but these things are just normal. Normal to do. They may not look for the most exciting parts of life, but they will value you and your time and your energy and they will give to you back something valuable in return and they will protect you okay you have somebody willing to protect you to protect your safety to offer you stability which is also a form of protection and you have somebody that will become a king they're not gonna remain a knight whether it's a woman or a man it doesn't matter they're gonna become a king which means that they're going to evolve into being a better partner over time. So avoid big words, big promises, a big talk. Avoid it. Don't take people for what they could be in the future. Take them for who they are now. And just know that this is a, a safer bet to make. In your case, Pile 3. For those of you who... You're not... Like, for those of you who are dealing with these two people... Because I'm channeling two collectives. The first, that you have this poet or mystic in love with you. And then the other collective is choosing between two options. And if I were you, I would most likely go for the safer safer option the stability the commitment the commitment but that depends like if you have an air venus of course you wanna you wanna explore have an adventure and have fun time and do different things every day <laughs> i understand but yeah i'm just saying that for some for some of you the air sign or that individual that promises you the adventure is promising you a mirage with the seven of swords Okay, so that's it pile three. I hope you guys resonated. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you enjoyed this short, sweet and kind of spontaneous reading. I sure did. Uh, it was very fun. I felt like I just want to channel. So I hope this gave you some clarity. I hope this is accurate and is going to be useful to you let me know in the comment section below like share subscribe to support my channel and my work and you can donate on coffee or you can look if my services are available um what else i think that's it i think that's it so thank you for watching this i highly highly appreciate you and i'll talk to you soon bye